grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In the end, today, the good news is a word to a friend. Jesus describes a day in the life of a world not unlike our own. Jesus compares this day with the kingdom of heaven, contrasting its relationships with the way we are to live with each other in the realm of God's life among us. On a day like this, very few folks follow the same path. From dawn to dusk, people are called into the vineyard, called into service, called into the world, called into life. And what is too early for some is too late for others. What is too slow in this side's judgment is much too fast in this side's opinion. These have been working all the live long day under the sun we see on the job site. But those have been living most of the day, hidden from our view doing who knows what for God knows what reason. It's a day in the life of a world not unlike our own. As we discern God's call into service and our call into the world, we are prone to look around to see who's showing up. And it's not uncommon that we take note of when they arrive, of what they contribute, of how much credit we think they deserve in terms of our own sweat and elbow grease. And it strains our relationships at times. Whether our neighbors wait to respond to work at this life we have rushed in to welcome, or they wake up before us to tackle at daybreak what we just need a little more rest and more time to warm up to approach. So this is our world, where our priorities and our passions, our agendas and energies, our responses and responsibilities, our dedication and our deserving do not always align very well from one to another. To our misaligned maneuverings, the gospel assures God's grace in giving what is good for what we need. Rooted in God's generosity to early birds as to night owls, to late bloomers as to early risers. In a radical or holy, or as Jesus describes it, perfect decision for equity despite human iniquity, God even makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain to fall on the righteous and on the unrighteous. No matter when we woke, where we were, what we worked, how we responded, we receive God's love what is needful for this life, as grace as we need it, or grace would not be grace. So in this motley world of ours, we live with God by grace. Yet how do we live with each other? How are we to live this life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so it will be known that we are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel. At the end, today, the good news must be a word to a friend. If we would only listen to Jesus and love the Lord our God with all our heart and mind and soul and love our neighbor as we love ourself, friendship might come easily. But we struggle, at least I struggle, especially when it's our friends, our longtime loved ones, our family in Christ, 
who rush or wait or otherwise complicate what we have believed would be right or righteous in pace with us. In the words of the gospel for this day, in the very moment when, instead of loving them, I am grumbling and bumbling and mumbling and murmuring against God's generosity and against my neighbor's idiocies, I mean idiosyncrasies, Jesus draws me near and speaks to me as the very thing I struggle most to be, a friend. God in Jesus names me, as Jesus names you, friend. And it's certainly not an exhaustive list, but when Jesus talks to us as friends, echoing the words of the gospel, we may glean at least four aspects of how a friend might speak or communicate or relate or simply live with another. Friendship involves fairness, faithfulness, freedom, and forgiveness. The generous one addresses the mumbling friend saying, Friend, I am doing you no unrighteousness. Did you not agree with me? for what you need for this day. Take what belongs with you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I'm good? Friends, life isn't fair, but friendship ought to be. Fair, not in the sense of easy, fair weather, but in the vital importance of a fair trial. Fairness affords and admits honesty. Let's be frank, says God to a friend. Whatever are my actions or affections in other arenas, I have done you no wrong. And I have not treated you unfairly by my graciousness elsewhere, God says to a friend. The truth is only right for friends to face. We cannot assign or accept false sins and have a fair friendship. Fairness, safety, and honesty for truth not self-righteous claims. Safety supports friendship. And truth between friends is held in trust, or in what we experience as faith. Faith is not what we believe about each other, but faith is what we commit to each other. Faith is our trustworthy loyalty, our dedication to a friendship that can navigate even painful truths. In our closest friendships, we vow and covenant neither our emotions nor our beliefs, but our faith. And sadly, sometimes, faith is irreparably broken between us as humans. Yet God is so faithful a friend to us that our most difficult truth, our willingness to go our own way, even to betray and deny and crucify love itself in Christ and Christ in one another, is answered by faith that resurrects to befriend us again. Friends draw close in fairness and faithfulness, in which our lives may orbit each other in the freedom of personal space. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? asks a friend. Honesty and loyalty with our friends, 
fairness and faith, provide parameters of safety and trust for us to live together while retaining freedom to develop and mature our personalities as we grow deeper in friendship. When the friendly beasts around him stood, Jesus, our brother, kind and good, was humbly born, so sings the carol, not to remain static with us as the Christ child, but to increase freely in wisdom and in stature and in divine and human favor beside a church that likewise, like newborn infants, longs for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it we may grow into salvation as friends to God and one another. Our freedom ought not threaten our fair and faithful friendships. But Judas did threaten Jesus. And ironically, it is only Judas, in this moment of arresting betrayal, whom Jesus, in all the Gospels, explicitly calls and names friend. Because fairness, faithfulness, and freedom often falter in our friendships, forgiveness is a fourth hallmark of our lasting and loving relationships. Because we cast the evil eye, because we are envious, even that our friends can be so good, it is our friends' grace mercy, and peace to us. Yes, it is their forgiveness to us that allows fairness, faith, and freedom to thrive between friends. This is how we live as friends. And so when Jesus describes a day in the life of a world like ours, in which we struggle for peace and to love the maligned for being so misaligned souls around us. At the heart of it all, in the end, today, the good news is God's Word. The Word made flesh to you and to me, or as Jesus promises, to a friend. Amen.